Moving on now, we'll go forward to another interesting session. Uh, the subject for the same is uh, what's going to drive growth in OTT streaming? The session is powered by OTT Play. To begin the proceedings, uh, may I please call upon stage Ron Crasto, Senior Media Consultant, to moderate the session. He will be joined by the likes of Prasoon Garg, Chief Business Officer, Applause Entertainment. Prasoon sir, Prasoon sir, yeah. Ravindra Narayan, MD and President, PTC Network. Zafar Savan sir, again, Product Head, OTT Play. Samar Khan, CEO, Jagannot Productions. Namit Sharma, CEO, Dreamers and Doers. Lastly, but not the least, we also have Chani Alawat Dabash. She's joining us virtually over for this session. Thank you so much. Moving on. So I think I should say a loud good afternoon because today morning I conducted one session. <clears throat> so let's hear. Good afternoon. Now it's very low, louder. Good afternoon. Good, good. What are you guys? Okay, first question, guys, uh, for all of you. Uh, if content is king, is OTT the new god? Well, it certainly looks like that. Several film producers whose films people are not even going to theaters to watch will vouch for it that there's a new god on the horizon and people are worshipping that god. So, that, okay. yeah, sounds true. Samar? You know, I don't know whether I should give a politically correct answer or a politically incorrect answer. I think, I think it's too early to say who the new god or the, you know, anything is right now. I think it's just, it's just been, let's, let's be honest about it. I mean, we've just been here for five years, out of which two years was COVID. So, it's too early to really say, whether people will continue, you know, worshipping the same God or we'll find new Gods because we have a habit of finding new Gods. So, I sh I'm sure we'll find something else. But currently, I suppose it's a, it's a technology that's here to stay. More than anything else, I think what people have now realized is that uh, every, every, every phone is a screen. So, more than anything else, what OTT has done essentially is that it's given you the freedom to watch content at your convenience. And that is a great uh, change that's happened uh, with, with the coming in of the OTT technology. Forget the content, forget the content that, you know, people are watching sports on OTT. So people are watching television shows on OTT. So as a technology, I don't think it's going away anywhere and it's, it's growing faster than ever before. And now with 5G coming in, I think it will grow even faster. Right. And people are now, you know, in, in, on the habit of watching content and consuming content. So yeah, it's pretty much here to stay. but. I don't know if it's the last god or we'll find some other prophet or god pretty much after this, I don't know. Navid, what do you need to add? I think uh, you're right about content being king, but uh, I think there's only one god and that's the audience. Uh, the audience is god, they always have been and they always will be. The medium in which they, through which they consume storytelling narratives will keep changing every few decades, I guess, you know. But uh, what doesn't go away is as storytellers, I can speak for myself and maybe Summer, I guess, is that we will always be at the service of that God, which is the audience. Great. What about uh, you, Prasun? What do you say? What's your take? So, yeah, I think I agree with Naveen. Um, so, I think it's all in the storytelling. And OTT is just a better medium to, te to tell the stories and for audience to watch it. Um, you can watch it any you can watch it anytime, anywhere. Uh, content is sort of is, in, is on your fingertips. There are one billion devices. So I think the medium is there to stay. Even if you see the pure numbers, you, the market of OTT is about two billion at this point, and I think uh, it will sort of reach about 15 billion uh, dollars by 2030. Um, yeah. So it's comparing to TV, which is about 10 billion dollars, so I think it's a viable medium. It's going to sort of stay. It's going to grow. And uh, I think TV, uh, OTT is going to be next TV. So that's what we are looking at. Zakar, what's your take? Yeah, so, uh, you know, like, uh
oh my god i've got so much to watch but also uh, in other other insight it's also driving content how do we analyze that what's your take uh, samar uh, i think this question of too much to watch is i don't think a valid question because it's like saying there are too many restaurants in bombay i mean or like saying that you know there are too many films that release every year we don't have to watch everything at the at the i think that's the the thing that's changed is that maybe the audiences are realizing that they don't need to be in a mad rush to watch something you know ab there are lots of shows that i still haven't caught on I, there are lots of shows that i haven't seen you know yet and i will watch them at my own convenience so this too much is i think too much is not a fair uh, uh, is not a fair comment that you know there is too much of content because people are now have the luxury of watching it at their own pace i think what is going to change and i was really really impressed to see ott play because i didn't know that this existed you know i think this mother app is something that is going to really catch on and needs to catch on because it's right i mean i don't have the bandwidth to subscribe to so many networks and so many whatever and xyz so i think the mother app or the mothership is something that might be the next step of where the growth will be because content is getting made at a really fast pace i mean i still have deliveries to do for prasun uh, and he keeps putting like pressure on that mera delivery kab hai and i'm sure we are so the the pace is 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 frenetic right now it's really really frenetic but i think the 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 next step would be probably the fact that everything will come together under one roof and people will have the opportunity to watch it namit was here yeah i i think uh, it's unfair to state that there's too much because ultimately there's too much because a there's consumers for that too much and there are businesses that believe that money should be put in because their businesses can grow on the back of that consumer demand so that too much is clearly driven by a supply demand kind of situation we've seen uh, consumption patterns in 2020 and 21 spike in 22 they are changing but they're not changing dramatically uh, my personal view is that uh, what that too much is going to do is it's going to make all of us in the room uh, as creators makers platforms whatever whatever job you are doing whatever position you hold is the selection is going to become more you know judicious in that sense uh, there was a time say 4 years ago 5 years ago when when i started out producing shows uh, and there was a rush to try and do a little bit of this and a little bit of that but now that you've seen the result of a little bit of this and that uh, everybody's uh wise enough i guess to take better decisions right. so i think that so the consumer will benefit in the next 6 months year 2 years where every creator every producer director platform everyone's going to try and make their products better because only the best will survive right. so that's the according to me the 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 by product of the problem of too much prasun what to add on this my view in this is I don't think there's enough content. I think there's lack of content at this point. I think applause needs to stop, slow down. You know, the, 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 this too much is a problem with applause, not with anybody else. <laughs> Sorry, Pras. Take that as a compliment. I will. I will. So yeah, I think this OTT audience is what mash of pieces, right? So it is not one size fits all. So it is not the uh, daily soap sas bahu. We sort of we put on it. a fixed tv slot and everyone is watching it whoever likes it is also watching whoever doesn't like it is also watching now we have got every individual with a smartphone and different different choices right and there are enough large number of uh, uh, mass, uh, masses of niches uh, which sort of can be supplied i think we all started with this premium uh, group right of the first 50 first 100 mil million audiences we were all targeting that with our current programming i think as the ott expand ott needs to also target Uh, audience which are larger enough right so as so as we grow we will see you know uh, not tv content but definitely you know uh, easier to create uh, large format more episodic content coming on tv uh, which sort of will attract the audience in the tier 2 tier 3 uh, cities and towns as well so i think we need to create more content okay uh, what about you sir what do you think what your thought on this see for me too much is not the question i will avoid that that has already been answered I'll tell you why OTT is succeeding. It's succeeding because of the kind of content which is being made now, 
and it was not being made earlier. The kind of movies, the kind of series, the kind of shows, the kind of software that is being made now was not being made even in the boom of television channels, the uh, various avenues, the globalization. All of that happened but the content was still the same which was being churned out 20 years ago, 30 years ago in a newer format, newer uh, 2K, 4K or HD formats. The actual stories, the actual content is now coming in its own. Uh, for me, this is the beginning of the golden period for all content creators. If you think you can create something good, you have opportunities galore. Somebody or the other will pick up your strip, pick up your project and it will see the light of the day. It was not so earlier. Small town producers, small town locations, actors, struggling directors, producers, singers, all of them have got work. I mean, you will hardly find in, uh, play, I'll give you an example of Punjab where we operate. We uh, produce uh, one hour original feature film every week. Every week. I think we're the only company in the world which is producing one hour original film every week. The result was that the people who used to rush off to Delhi or Bombay to find work don't have to go anywhere now. There is a whole new industry which has got established. The theater actors, the cinema actors, the musicians, the, the crew, they've all got work. And thanks to this effort, there are other players who are also stepping in. And there is suddenly, Punjab has become the hub of shooting. There are movies being made, web series being made. So I think the OTT boon has been very good for an industry which was struggling to find good content. That's the success. Great. We have Chandani on the screen. Chandani, what's your view? Uh, I think, I hope you caught my question. Yes, yes, of course I did. Thank you. I thought for a second you were ignoring the only woman on the panel. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that there is too much content. I think that uh, different genres are being looked at, regions are opening up, um, good stories um, uh, are there, are going to be told. Yes, it's giving a lot of people a lot more opportunity and um, you know like uh, writers for example have got their due I really believe for the first time so and of course it's such a great time for audiences um, I speak from a non-fiction perspective I mean for we are getting budgets and time to produce research content um, which was never seen before so I agree I think it's the it's the start of a golden age it will eventually of course if it's bad content people will reject it anyway so, uh, we are at the start and I think we're going to see some exciting times ahead. Great. Zafar, do you want to add? Yeah. So, I would like to share some numbers. Uh, so, as of today, uh, you know, we believe there are about 70,000 movies and shows which are out there available to stream, uh, you know, on at least one OTT platform. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I would like to, you know, like just bring in OTT play here because we started building it, you know, like, uh, one of the you know questions that we had was okay how many sh should we recommend right because let's say if I you know recommend a, a show which has almost let's say 10 20 50 episodes right so that, that person is sorted for almost a week maybe a couple of weeks right you now if consumption is predominantly happening during the weekend uh, so I think the idea is to uh, you know get to those 10 personalized uh, you know movies and shows or you know and this does not even include the sports content uh, so, you know, if I can recommend, let's say, the top five, top ten for every user, uh, you know, throughout, across all these uh, OTT platforms, I think, you know, that should do the trick. So, it's more about personalization. Uh, overall, I believe, you know, like, if you, uh, because we have looked at, you know, the movies which have released in India since 1930, so I think that count is around two and a half lakh. So, you know, it's all about just getting that five movies and shows right for every user. Okay, so now that adds me to a question. Okay, there's a lot of content being floated everywhere. So, as producers, uh, do you really look at massy content, classy content, or original content? What's the mix? Uh, I, I do understand there won't be an idle mix, but how does it work in this, uh, you know, so-called, um, uh, you know, complicated yet uh, interesting country, India, where you have to sit here and put your head up and say what content I have to play. So, I will start with Namit. I, Namit, can you give your views on this? See, there's, there's, no, there's no one answer in, in, in this case because uh, for the first time, you're, the audience is experiencing a, you know, pick and choose kind of, kind of format and our audience is also evolving. 
uh, unlike television and film, which has been like a decade, decade old, uh, old habit. But definitely, uh, my take now is that the massier a show is, the the more audience it will attract. Uh, but uh, the niche, you know, the, the niches now are no longer small niches; they are big niches, and they all will be serviced by various types of stories. So there's space. There's space for all kinds of stories. Every producer, every creator, every maker knows that they can do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But yes, uh, we all know and we've all learned uh, this over and over again that the more accessible you make a narrative, the more audience it reaches out to. Samar, what's your take? I think I'll just take forward what Namit has said that um, the, the struggle of trying to make it massy has been a struggle that's been going on for content forever, from the days of theatre. That your play is very niche, your film is very niche, your TV is very niche. But in that time, there was only one screen that we were catering to. Now at least I know that there, is a, uh, there are multiple screens, so I can stay within my niche. You know, I think what, what content has become, and I think I've been fortunate enough that I've worked in TV, I've done films, and now I'm doing OTT, and same with Namit. Um, what has happened now is that you can decide to make a Rolls Royce and go full out. You don't have to make your sushi with some bhilpuri attached to it and say, chalo, thik yaar, thoda bhilpuri bhi nahi. Sushi bana raho main, ye sushi khayenge, aur mujhe iske saath koi bhi uh, uh, maasi nahi banana mujhe isko. Mujhe sushi hi banani hai. Lekin, jisko bhilpuri banani hai, wo banai bhilpuri. Because uski bhi audience hai. Toh pehle kya hota tha ki pehle hum koushish karte te ki hum har cheez ko sushi ko bhi thoda sa hai kaam karte hai yaar. Thoda sa na is mein tadka bhi dal dete hai yaar. Wo Punjab wale dekh lenge. Nini ek song bhi dal dete hai yaar. Ab wo pressures thode kam ho gai hai. Ab thoda sa ye bola jata hai ki yaar aap apni audience ko define kariye. Define your audience and make it for it. Just define your audience that you are going to make this show. Because that show will reach that audience. Pehle wo dar tha ki wo shayad wahan tak nahi pohunche ga. Now that fear has gone out. That fear has gone out because if uh, you know you want to watch a show, you don't have to sit with your entire family and watch it. You can watch it on your own pace. Which is why you're seeing in the last four years, you're seeing so many stories come out which were like pent up frustration. Ki yaar ye kahani mujhe batane ka mauka hi nahi mila. You know whether it was crime or whether it was uh, 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 army shows or whether it was uh, what we say intense dramas or anything because we were trying to cater to a thali system. So that thali system is getting over, which is the happiest thing, I think, for all content creators, that we don't have to cater to a thali anymore. We can cater to what we really want to focus on, make, and they will find an audience for it. The platform is now the thali. The, an app is a thali, where there's a little bit of everything for everyone. So the show doesn't, the show can be itself, whatever it's in the thali. Chandni, do you believe in the thali system? You know, I, I don't... I don't even pretend to be an expert vis-a-vis -vis fiction, but vis-a-vis -vis non-fiction, I'll tell you. I, the stories are the same, but um, the, the one is I believe, I, and I really believe this, that uh, you know, documentary was always uh, kind of looked at as something that was done in a more boring way. Um, you know, it was seen as something that was super niche. Um, consciously, I believe that we have tried in the form of telling it uh, to make it more exciting. Uh, we have tried to make it more hyper-local. Um, whoever wants to speak in whatever language, I, I'm a strong believer in that. So in that sense, we've not insisted that it has to be only English or only Hindi or only Malayalam or whatever it is that we are trying to make. So hyper-local is something that I'm very conscious about, yet keeping a certain kind of production quality in mind. Um, it is it is important to me that it um, uh, people are not bored by it that it has it's told in a certain way. So yes, in that sense, I do definitely think that we should get it to reach more people. Um, and there have been challenges in that, but um, you know, it's uh, we started. I mean, true crime anyway has a very very. Uh, you know, India has a very huge appetite for true crime. So I sincerely believe that we are not just doing it for a very niche and it will appeal and people will like it also in the way that we have tried to tell the stories. Zafar, how do you second this with numbers? What, what mass, niche or regional? 
So, uh, I mean, we are not in the business of creating content, you know, we just basically are distributing and trying to personalize the experience, but I'll just tell you, you know, what our experience is. So initially, you know, when we basically, you know, went uh, about solving this problem, uh, you know, of, of you know, recommending uh, movies and shows, right? One thing which we observed is India, mein, you know, every movie is multi-genre, right? You no, know, every movie will have drama, genre, you know, like action, romance, comedy, you know, so like, you know, every movie in a way is similar to, you know, but I think that is changing now, uh, uh, you know, and we see, you know, like a lot of consumption spikes, you know, for, uh, you know, I would say, for example, uh, you know, we recently saw a lot of people are clicking on a, on a Turkish drama, uh, you know, then there was this Arabic series, you know, which is kind of, you know, like getting, so that I think, you know, all this content which, uh, you know, now, uh, you know, has been, I would say, licensed by the top OTTs, right, they are finding people, they're finding viewers, they're, they're finding consumption, so I think, you know, like, uh, we should not stick to any particular uh, genre. Sir, what is your thoughts? See, for me, as a platform or as a producer, what I look for is, I don't have to tell the maker or the producer or the director to compromise on his passion. Stories are born out of passion and the maker must make it out of the belief, out of the passion that he has in the project. Earlier, what used to happen, external forces, box office pressure, hai, isme gaane bhi chahiye. Ya, TV audience, ko na, ye, adultery or yes, a language is something there are regulations to follow but my passion was to create something which is of international level and in the project which I think it will work it will touch the chords now the makers have the liberty to follow their passion and good product is born only out of passion if the maker does not have the passion in the product he's producing the product will never be good so the compromise products era will slowly go away the maker's passion, the, the, the belief of the producer in the product will now translate into good products coming in. If you see now, the trend is the stories are back. Even in the films, uh, South Indian films, why they are doing good? Because they have story, they have stylization, they have a belief of the maker that if I make it like this, it will work. And they have the daring now. And it is working. That kind of content will also give OTT the appointment viewing. I mean. We used to say, we OTT to aram se dekhne wala kaam hai. But I have to wake up now at 6.30 to watch House of Dragon. Same thing used to happen in Game of Thrones. You produce that quality, people will get up, sit in their chairs at whatever time you put it on and they will see it. So the passion, some, somebody had passion that I will make Game of Thrones. And it worked. So I'm waiting when the time for Indian creators will come and they will be able to produce quality that will be seen all across the globe. The platforms are ready. The technology is ready, the reach is ready, it's now the belief, passion and the faith of the maker that I can conquer the world is now beginning and we will see soon, it will happen. So how do you want to support this? I think this? we have started doing that, what you are saying. We have already won an Emmy, got nominated for an, another year, right? And I think this trend will continue, we will evolve from here. Uh, I agree with what Namit was saying, it's all about Thali. It's basically the OTT platform who are programming for all the audiences. Now audiences have got different tastes and choices, so they want to watch different type of content. That's what OTTs are doing. Uh, so when we make a content piece, we are not really evaluating, okay, this content piece will reach out to 10 million or 100 million. We are the making content piece based on conviction, like how you were saying. And some of the some of the content, you know, really breaks through. It goes, like for example, if you take example of Scam 1992 or Family Man or Bujapur, these are the premium content which has reached and cut across the masses. So I think that's what will happen. We'll keep experimenting, making different type of content. Some of them will resonate with two, 10, 10 million uh, audience and some will resonate to 100 million of them. So this question I generally come across many times is big stars, big views. Is it true or is it false? I mean, I know I don't want to ask a uh, you know, political question here, but I just want to understand from your point of view, does Big Stars give uh, big views uh, based on the experiences because you guys have produced so many shows and so many series? Uh, now, you want to start? I think it, uh, casting big definitely uh, gives you the uh, digital equivalent of what in the film business is the, is the opening. You know, because it allows you to market the show on the back of a face, uh, their fan following, etc., etc. And and by big, it's no longer just Bollywood. 
it could be social media stars, it could be, you know, people who have following and traction in the, uh, in, in the audience base. But at the end of the day, the story and the makers have to do the heavy lifting. The face can only bring the audiences to the first episode. If you, and your show does not succeed because of the first episode, it succeeds when people complete watching the series. So a big star, like always, will only allow you that window to attract audiences. We've seen in the three examples, I think, that Prasoon used right now of uh, Family Man, you know, Scam, uh, as well as Mirzapur, neither were mounted on big stars, you know. Manoj Bajpai has been known as a consummate actor for 20 odd years, you know, since Satya. But he's not, he doesn't himself, you know, call himself a big star in that sense. He's an actor who chooses and chases great roles and great performances. So at the end of the day, while a big star and big casting can uh, help attract audiences, the, the heavy lifting will always have to be done by the, uh, by the makers. Samar? This is a warning bell. Okay, so before, I mean, I think, I think Namit has pretty much answered the question and Prasun himself has answered the question because he's named three shows and he's not named Rudra as one of the top shows. So, I mean, pretty much shows that it's not the star power. It's the, it's, it's still, scam is still known for being scam. You know, even though Ajay Devgan had, they had Rudra with Ajay Devgan, but the, the feather in their cap will still remain a scam. The feather in the cap will still remain a Mirzapur or the feather in the cap will still remain any other show. So, I don't think it's about the star, but Namit's correctly said that we can, the, the star can pull in, you can put him on hoardings and tell people to watch the show. But the disadvantage of having a star is that over here, uh, because there are eight episodes, seven episodes, people will watch the first episode and switch off. Movie hall mein ghus gai, to movie dekke bahar aai jayenge. You know, wo dekhi lenge picture. To aapko paisa mil jayega. But yaha pe agar first episode ke baad subscribe nahi karenge, to so, it really the so. crux of the matter is OTT has given the leverage for the product to succeed and not just uh, celebrities to lift it up. This is the only time in our cinema history where you'll see the content history that without stars, project are succeeding. Early, if you're making a film for a theatre, you have to have a big star, otherwise you will not even get a financer to make the film. They will not uh, go for it. Today, you have the liberty that I, I may not have the celebrity, but I may have the apt star to suit the character and it will work. Right. Chandni? Just give me three minutes. I have to sum it up properly. I love the music, but just give me three minutes. Are you asking me about stars? Because my stars are only serial killers and alleged murderers and alleged cannibals at this point. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can only speak to you from an audience perspective. I, I, I honestly think it's a really bad trap to fall into. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't think that stars are really required. I think story is queen. I wouldn't say king. Prasun, what is your... I think, of course, OTT is all about great storytelling and great actors, right? But if you have a star as your great actor in the show, it really helps. It helped Rudra become the highest viewed shows of this year. Uh, so I think the focus should be on great storytelling. You write a great story, tell it well, and have great actors who fits the role uh, acting in it. And if that's a start, it's a plus point, definitely. Great. So one last question before we sum up. It's a sum up question. What is the next big thing, only one point, uh, in OTT? Namit? Next yeah, next big thing in OTT. Next big thing in OTT, I think if you just have to like work harder, I think every conversation I have with, uh, you know, a panel like this or in platforms, it's always about uh, how are we going to get the next, you know, 20, 30, 40, 100 million viewers into the ecosystem? And that's a collective responsibility between platforms and makers. So I think that's, that's it because uh, one, should, one cannot rest on the base that's available now. One just has to keep pushing, making for more. Thanks, Namit. Samar? I, honestly, I don't know what the next big thing is. I'm not a soothsayer. I really don't know. I mean, if you know the answer, please let me know. If you know which stock market is going to go up tomorrow, let me know. I'll buy the share. I mean, we really don't know what the next big thing is going to be. Everybody can talk about it and say, oh, we have to great find more stories and we have to find more subscribers. Yeah, we do. I mean, that's, that's logical. But what's the next big thing? <laughs> I have no answer for that. Okay. <laughs> like, really. Chandni, what's your take? 
But I'm going to uh, put it out there and tell you that the next big thing is going to be the unscripted market with India Today Originals leading it from the forefront. And okay. it's, it's an un unexplored market. And uh, I think that you're going to see some incredible, incredible content. And I'm very excited about this market. And I've taken personal responsibility, uh, you know, to kind of hopefully spread the uh, viewership and, uh, you know, the investment into this market. I think um, documentary filmmakers were ignored for a long time in the overall scheme of things. And that is the next big thing, really, from my stable. Thanks, Jasmine. Zafar? I think, uh, you know, consolidation has already started. Uh, you know, you see content from multiple OTTs, uh, you know, now available, you know, in a single platform. Uh, and OTT Play is not the first one to do it. Uh, you know, so I think that would continue. Uh, you know, giving, uh, you know, solving, you know, for users the problem of, you know, managing multiple logins. So I think, you know, that's, that's one. Uh, second, I would say, I think the consumption would move to TV uh, because, you know, on, on phone uh, screens, I think, you know, we're already competing with the short video content, right? So I think the binging, you know, will obviously move to, uh, you know, the last screen experience. And uh, we are seeing, you know, some uptick there. So, uh, you know, like I think TV, large screens and how, how we, you know, like I think leverage uh, OTTs, how le OTTs leverage uh, different large screens. Uh, you know, I think that will, uh, I mean, I think good thing to see, I think, in the future. So, uh, see, for me, the next big thing will be an Indian OTT or an Indian web series making it big in China, Spain, USA and Europe. That's the thing that we are waiting for and this is the time the leap will happen. I mean, I can give my example, the PTC Play has more subscribers in Canada, Pakistan, US and Australia than India. So this will become the mainline thing for other OTTs, we will cut across the language barrier, the geographical barriers, and Indian content will make it big globally. That will be the next big thing. Fantastic, sir. Parsoon, you want to close this? I agree this? with all. I think everyone has covered it. So I think simply put, uh, for us, what we, the way we say it is that next big thing is OTT is going to be the next TV. It's going to take 10 years. It's on all of us to figure out how to do it. It's going to be a combination of scripted, unscripted, animation, everything put together, Masi, niche content, which we'll keep doing. And yeah, I think audience is going to move to OTT. There's no two ways about it. And so we have to be prepared and do what needs to be done for that. Great. With that, we end with an applause. And <laughs> thank you, Namit, Samar, Zafar, sir. And person. Hello. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, can we please have the photographers? May I please now call upon stage uh, Franklin Toscano, founder CTO IWM Buzz, to give away the mementos for this session.